Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel Products. Mitch, Dynamite Diesel Products. Well, well, well. What are we doing, Mitch? Well, so you and I are both part of a 12 valve Cummins builder page on Facebook. And we answer a lot of questions on that page. So we decided we'd do a little YouTube video and address some of the questions that we see regularly. So first one we got, <clears throat> just put some 4K springs in my P-pump, but it seems to only rev out to 31 to 3200 ush RPMs. Any ideas why? I would, <clears throat> I would want to answer that question, but typing it on my phone, I would be frustrated. Correct. So first things first, uh, P-pump. Which P-pump? Because mm -hmm. as you have recently discovered with camshafts, Yep. That's a big difference, right? Very different. Yep. So whenever you guys are putting like, I got a P-pump, put which P-pump it is. 160, 175, 180, 215, somebody's aftermarket pump. Yep. You need to put more detail in there so we can actually answer the question better because 31, 3200 RPM, even with governor springs set correctly, the camshaft starts to nose over. Oh yeah, for sure. That's something that not everybody knows. You didn't know that before we were on the dyno, right? No, I didn't know it would nose over that hard. And now you know that it noses over no matter what. Yep. There's just not enough fill time in the camshaft to really rev the thing up and let it allow. It just won't make enough horsepower to really rev up. It'll free rev to like 4,000, 4,500 RPM. But when you're driving it down the street, trying to get all the fuel to burn and get all of it out of it, it just won't have enough fill time to really make enough uh, fuel there to, to support 4K. And, and that's what a lot of people will say is it'll free rev to 4,500 or whatever. And I try and street drive it and it only goes 32. It's like, well, that's just, that's how it works. That's the nature of the beast of that camshaft. Yep. So I would also be looking for like, is the overflow valve bad? Is the lift pump bad? Do you have enough fuel supply pressure? Because basically... A great way to check that is put a Schrader valve in the uh, back port on the injection pump. The front port has delivery valve or uh, overflow valve in it. The overflow valve, if that thing goes bad, you'll end up losing all the fuel pressure. So all yep. the, the volume coming out of the lift pump, no matter what lift pump, just opens up that uh, the, the uh, return valve and it flows back to the gas tank as fast as it can. So if you can put a Schrader valve on the inlet side of the injection pump, then put a fuel pressure gauge there. If it's coming off the camshaft lobe, you're gonna notice that that cycles from say zero to 20, zero to 20, zero to 20. That's no good. If it's cycling from say 20 to 40, 20 to 30, you're good. Anything above 20 is okay. Anything below 20, not okay. Anything below 20 is gonna act like it's got retarded timing. So it's gonna give you like uh, the white, like if you try and rev it up, it's gonna like act like it's shooting ducks, white smoke out tailpipe, things yep. like that. So basics, fuel supply pressure, make sure you got enough. And uh, don't ask a lot out of the camshaft. And then he also, doesn't really say it, it says that it revs out to 31 3200 rpm is that on the street and is that with a stock turbocharger right because if it's with a stock turbocharger the governor springs and the cam might be working pretty good but your drive pressure might be 75 pounds of drive pressure or say 35 or 40 pounds of boost and that in itself isn't going to want the motor to rev up yep but again like you said without loading the vehicle just free revving it, it might go to 4,500 RPM. Yeah, so like when when you guys ask questions, like be as specific, like list as much as you can. Like you may not think it's that big of a deal, but it definitely helps guys like us help you when there's more information in your post. My dog's in this room and I'm gonna give her <laughs> something to chew up because I took her bone because the bone was really noisy underneath the table. She's angry about it. Yeah, she's pretty upset. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let her turn this into a mothball and basically, Liberty, Liberty. Oh, there did she you hear that? She took off, she went on a run. <laughs> Liberty's just a little bit over a year old. She's, uh, she likes groceries. <laughs> she likes, yeah, she likes to eat like me. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, what's next, next one? So. 
<clears throat> I picked up a 95 12 valve auto completely stock. New to this engine, I've owned six sevens, built those, no problem. Just this older stuff, a lot of forums are up in the air. I'm looking into needing a reliable six to 700 horsepower. If anybody would PM me or even answer, that'd be much appreciated. Go back to a 6.7. Why do you need a 700 horsepower 12 valve? That was literally what I asked. <clears throat> not that I'm being a dick. I am asking hey, you. Don't cuss. I'm not being <laughs> mean. I'm asking you, why do you need 700 horsepower? Do you, have, you, have you had 700 horsepower 12 valves before? Not exactly the easiest thing to achieve. Not exactly the most reliable thing in the world. 12 valves are not common rails. You're basically stuck with static timing. With your 6.7, you've got dynamic timing, throttle input, mass airflow, all those things make, and you've got a bigger cubic inch motor with bigger valves, better shrouding, bigger bore, deeper stroke. A the head that flows way more. The, the head's a really, really good 12 valve head is like a stock 6.7 yeah. head. Injection pressure of a 6.7 or even a common rail 5.9 trumps a mechanical. Uh, you can make a 700 horsepower daily and <clears throat> we're gonna do that, but I've done it before and a stock cylinder head, it doesn't work very well. Like you've gotta add so much extra fuel and so much extra boost. If I did the same size turbos on your 6.7, it would make 900 to 1000 just to make a 12 valve force its way to 700. So it's just not the best, it's not the, the greatest idea. The way that the 12 valve head is physically um, they're not very heavy and they don't take cylinder pressure very well. They crack a lot more frequently. The flanges are weak. Yep. They're good at five, 600 horsepower, but anything more than that, they're not that great. So although you can make a thousand horsepower out of them, you can make 1200 horsepower. But back in the day, I had a truck that made like 1240 horsepower at the rear wheels. It had a 101 millimeter inducer blowing into a 66 millimeter inducer, a 13 mil pump, and a set of big extrude honed injectors. And it would make, like I say, it was like 1250. It didn't live, it, it, it broke often. At 900 horsepower, that truck weighed 6,500 pounds and ran mid tens. So 700 horsepower, you know, 650 to 700 is gonna get you at a quarter mile track pretty much. You gotta put a cage in at what, 1159 or quicker? 1149, so it'll put you right there. It's gonna get you to where you're gonna need a cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where my wife's truck, it's right there at 750, 800 now, and it's right on the verge of needing a cage. And it's two wheel drive, 5,000 pounds. So it, <laughs> is it possible? Yes. It'll take you more air and more fuel, and the cylinder head's not gonna love it. Like it, unless, now power driven, we do have, <clears throat> we're, we're building, I bought some Waggler rods, which were 80,000 shorter than factory rods. Why? Because I'm putting a 6.7 liter crank in it, so I can gain the extra 80,000 worth of throw, and I can gain some cubic inches. I want that stroke, so I gain the cubic inches, and I want it so when I'm on the street, I've got all that low-end grunt that 12 valves don't really have compared to a 6.7. I'm building like just a street grunt machine. That I, I just want to drive away from a stoplight and have it feel like a 6.7. I also purchased a power-driven ported head. Yep. I don't know if it's like their stage two or whatever it was, but I got their head with good valves and all the springs and things like that, because now that I'm gonna make this thing make 700, 800 horsepower, Ultimately, I want it to be as free flowing as possible to try and keep up with the, the common rails. Yeah. A common rail just makes 700 a lot easier. Now, cylinder head is addressed, camshaft will be addressed, pistons, I'm using the factory 12 valve style uh, piston that's in the motor because those pistons will live up to 1,000, 1,200 horsepower pretty easily. Timing. I'm gonna use a notch top style plunger out of a 215 style pump, but mine are actually, instead of 12 millimeters in diameter, they're a 12.5 millimeter diameter plunger. And we're using that with one of our uh, 215 style camshafts. Uh, so it's a really good pump. 
injector lines are going to be like the factory diameter. And the reason for that is because a line is basically a really long accumulator. And the, the more volume you have in the line, the more time it takes to fill the line before it makes enough pressure to chatter the nozzle. So sled pullers in the past have chronically been like, we want big fat diameter lines and that's great. They did it for years and it worked. Now they're taking and moving the injection pumps back with a spacer plate because all of a sudden they've discovered that by getting the lines very, very short and to the injectors as fast as possible, the shorter line, well, there's less accumulator effect. So it hits the nozzle harder, faster, and it's making more power on the engine dynos. So what I've been saying for like 20 years is on my dyno, I tried larger diameter lines and it was two thumbs down every time. I never tried using four, four and a half, five inch turbos. So I didn't know if there was possibly a gain upstairs at 5,000, 6,000 RPM, like all the super stock guys would run. I never tested that. But on street trucks, larger diameter lines, longer lines were garbage. Uh, we're staying with stock diameter lines and we're staying with, uh, it's just a factory coming set. Um, to make seven or 800 horsepower, the injector is going to be like probably a set of our stage fours, which whole size, uh, want to talk about whole size for a sec? We can talk about whole size. Yeah. So we don't dynamite does not go by whole size. And in the 12 valve world that confuses everybody because for the longest time, everybody goes, I run five by 14, 16, 18, whatever. And when somebody's, when Lenny and I mentioned, hey, I think the best fit for you would be stage twos. Want to make 500 horsepower? Run stage twos. They go, well, what size? Okay. If I told you the size, it's going to sound all wrong. They're small. Yes. They're going to, they're going to measure super small. And so, they, they keep, we keep talking about common rails having better uh, line pressure or rail pressure. That's true. The smaller the nozzle orifice is, the, the better the line pressure is going to be. So when we come at you and go, yeah, these are going to be like a five by 10. Yeah. You're going to be like five by 10. That ain't going to make 500 horse. But whole geometry and fluid dynamics don't care about whole diameter. Like to a point, a bigger hole. But if it's a garbage hole, which right now, green screen technology, show me garbage hole. Yuck. Yuck. Now, green screen technology, show me really good hole. You can see the whole quality from one to the other just because any sort of fluid at pressure is going to find the bad hole very, very, very restrictive. And in order to get rid of the restriction, the only thing you can do is clean up the hole, which China doesn't really care to do. And that's why everybody measures in hole diameter. China can yep. say, look, here it is. It's a five by 12, it's a five by 14, 145, 155. They can say all those things and they're all holding true. Doesn't mean it's gonna make power, there's not really any Cummins turbo diesel trucks for anybody in China to do any R&D on, so good luck. I see often in these forums yep. that people are running way too big of an injector, and I yeah. know that their line pressure is gonna be really low, mm -hmm. and I wanna type something out, and then I'm like, no, don't. Because you yes. can't explain it in enough detail that anybody's gonna understand, and you're gonna get attacked for being correct, but going against the grain. So, exactly. Yeah. Yep. It happens. I get attacked. I'm like, okay. Whatever. What do I know? 700. Come on, give me that. You want? Oh, Lord. My dog's going to be so full of paper, she won't be able to, uh, well, Hopefully. think straight. <laughs> yeah. She didn't attack it. Nope. She went Apparently, through. the first piece put her to, to bed. <laughs> All right. This is my first diesel, which is would be a second gen 12 valve. Wanting more power, but I have an auto trans. Current mods. 16 degrees of timing, no fuel plate, no wastegate, no, oh, excuse me, non-wastegated HX35, and an, an adjusted star wheel. My question is, could I build a compound setup with a 475 and be able to spool it with about 20 degrees of timing and 5x12s from Ducky? Yeah. Sure. Um, 16 degrees of timing on the street is good. Put the fuel plate back in it because what does the dyno say about a fuel plate? <clears throat> Very dirty, smoky, and less power. And I have multiple trucks that we've tested that on 
then I can show you dyno results that you lose power without a plate. Reason for that is for those of you guys that have ever been around any sort of common rail that's ever been tuned with a laptop, you measure two things to make power. Injection rail pressure, which basically the mechanical plunger can only make so much pressure. So then the nozzle ends up being the dictating factor. If you give it too much nozzle, you lose all your line pressure. And a five by 12 with, is it a 160 or 175? Exactly, we don't know. If it's a five by 12 with a 160 or 175, then your, your line pressure is less than a thousand PSI probably. And a common rail runs around at 15, 16,000 PSI. They start and idle at 5,500. Yep. So your pressure is gonna be garbage and it requires a big hole to get any fluid at the piston whatsoever. And then by advancing the plate forward, you're allowing the rack in the injection pump to travel from say 14 millimeters of rack to 15 to 16, 17. And as the rack rotates, you're basically allowing the injector to uh, start filling and closing with greater time. So you're putting more volume to the injector over a longer duration of time. Yeah. And in the tuning world, we always limit microseconds um, because that's very laptop programmable, it's very exact. But when you pull the plate out, that's like asking your tuner to give you uh, 3,500 microseconds, which isn't exactly. safe, it's not sane it's gonna be super smoky and dirty and it's not gonna make any power. So put the plate back in it, find somebody's plate you like, get a set of injectors that has some K factor and it will tear apart horsepower wise what you've already got. Mm -hmm. Doing a 35 on a manifold with a stock turbine wheel is always a bad idea. You basically have a compressor and a turbine that are matched to pump about the same amount of air. So when you add a 475, which is gonna be around, don't quote me on this, but let's call it around 120 pounds of air per minute. It's coming in at 120 pounds of air per minute and it's trying to blow that in to the 35 millimeter and, or the, 30, the HX35 hits your, your intercooler, the intercooler is big enough to take it, the intake valve eats what it can eat, the exhaust valve spits it out as best it can, but then it hits the turbine wheel and your, your manifold turns into a, a really large, really high pressure accumulator and it's gonna make like 100 plus PSI of drive pressure. Yeah. And that doesn't work on the dyno at all. No, 100 pounds of drive and I don't know what that might make 60 pounds of boost. I was going to say 60 pounds of boost. Yeah. yeah. So you're 40 pounds of drive over. That is uh, very unhealthy. In 23 years, I've done a lot of driving, a lot of dynamic, a lot of testing. And I can tell you that the worse the cylinder head is, the more drive pressure, the more you want one to one. Uh, if it's a garbage, stock 12 valve cylinder head, you might want a little bit more drive than boost to keep it very spunky on the street. But turbo technology has come a long way in 23 years. So now you can buy lighter weight parts, billet wheels. We've discovered that a larger turbine wheel will be more responsive than a smaller turbine wheel, even though in the gas world, that's the opposite. But with Cummins trucks, there's long, slow strokes. With a V8, it's very short and very rapid strokes. So the smaller turbine wheel, I picture this being like water being shoved at a rapid pace at the turbine wheel and it spins the turbine wheel really quickly. And I picture the Cummins to be more like water that's coming at a greater volume, but slower stroked. So a little bit longer lever, which would be the turbine wheel tip. And it seems to drive the compressor wheels a little bit harder. So my advice for this guy would be, I would start by upgrading the turbocharger, putting the fuel plate back in it, yep. getting a set of injectors that are gonna match the turbocharger you choose. If you're shooting for, let's, let's put this guy at the top of a stock cylinder head. Let's say we're gonna make 600 horsepower with a set 475. Mm -hmm. I would tell him to go buy himself a, 
Well, that 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 little turbo that we've got from uh, from uh, power driven, power driven that sixty four, mm -hmm. that thing drives really really good. That's a great turbo. The turbine is so efficient. The drive is lower than the boost yeah. right now. Yeah. So they've got a fairly inexpensive, it's their Aggressor 64s, right? It's That one is the Aggressor 6064 that okay. we've got on it. So it's a 60 mil compressor wheel, 64 mil yes. turbine wheel. Yep. And what turbine housing is on that? Um, that's, that's a good question. I don't know what it is. It was gated, wasn't it? It is gated, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what it is. That little guy, the drive is about 20 pounds lower at least 10 pounds lower than the boost pressure right now. I think it's 10 pounds. And that's at like yeah. 400 horsepower on a single application. Super spunky to drive. It's super fun to drive. Yes. That's got a stock. We're, I'm mentioning this to you because it's on a stock cylinder head truck with just a good injection pump right now. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a set of our stage ones in it, which are kind of like a five by 11 ish, I'd guess. In like the, in the blue truck. Yeah, 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 probably. I think, I think they're about a five by 11. Yeah. And it was okay. Like, I guess most of you guys probably would think it drove pretty good and it was okay. Yeah. It it was normal 12 valve, dirty and smoky. Mm -hmm. Not horrible. At 425, 430 horsepower, it was horrendously smoky. Yeah, it got really bad. But we turned it down, got the smoke manageable, and then you changed out the injectors and put some like stage ones with pilots. Yeah, we started experimenting with pilots in our stage ones. That is a light switch. Yes. That, the turbine wheel sound is totally different even at idle. Truck starts better, mm. runs better, and it, smoke control wise and throttle response wise is insane. Like everything under the boost, like once you're making boost, once you've got five or eight pounds of boost on your side, you can stand on the gas pedal on almost any of these trucks and it just whiffs and then goes. Yeah. Uh, that truck, it's hard to get it to smoke now. And it's, the throttle response is twice as sharp as any 12 valve that I've ever driven in my life. So it really gave me, that's when I got super excited about doing more stuff to my 12 valve again. And that's when I was like, I'm going to buy some cool parts and actually make some horsepower and, and drive a 12 valve that actually can pull its weight. Yeah. So, and then we put stage twos in it and turned way down and it's like, it, it drives like a common rail. When, not gonna lie. when awesome. he says turned way down guys, basically what, what we mean is we put a little bit bigger injector in it. So it's got stage twos in it. And then we took the fuel plate, slid it back. Yes. And now we're basically like if we were tuning it, instead of giving it 2,500 microseconds, mm -hmm. we're only giving it like 2,000 microseconds. So we're hitting the piston harder, faster with the same or more fuel based off a little bit bigger injector. Here's the catch. When you've got a flat top pump, 175, 180, 160, you're going to get to a point with like stage two worked really awesome. And you're like, I can't wait to put a three in it. You put a three in it, it's hot, dirty, and smoky because the fluid that's able to leave the injector nozzle is more than the flat top plunger can rechamber at the same time. So the line pressure drops way off. That's why I'm always asking like, what pump do you got? Because if it's a notch top 215, um, I asked Kevin this morning at Northeast to measure a flat top like plunger a 215 style plunger, the 12.5s that we just had made, and a 13 and a 14. So we're gonna have all this data very soon, and it's gonna show you at 500 cc's how many millimeters of rack each pump had to give you to get 500 cc's. Ooh, that'd be cool. It's gonna be great data. Yeah. Because if you can make 500 cc's or 300 cc's or whatever your number is, your number is. If you can get 300 cc's out of five different pumps, but one pump, it takes 17 or 18 millimeters a rack, that's a long time for the injector to be hanging open. Mm -hmm. If you can get the same quantity with five millimeters less rack travel, you're way more violent. Your, your injection line pressure is really, really tight, really, really hard. There's another one in here. Keep going. Okay. There's another point that I wanted to bring up. All right, so the next one. Has anybody messed around with running a larger P-Pump 13 or 14 millimeter with a small injector on a street truck? 
I want to try and replicate what can be done in a common rail truck with large injectors, small duration, short, crisp injection events. I have, I have, I have. I've done this, I've done this. <laughs> Back in the old day, <clears throat> we discovered that the, uh, the Bosch P7100 pump could be retrofitted to a uh, 159 plunger. <clears throat> Dang it. What'd you do? I must have ate that piece of paper. I had a drink. Wow. <laughs> I've always liked Pepsi, but I might be allergic to it today. Uh oh. So back in the old day, we discovered that you could put a 159 plunger, that's the last three digits of the Bosch box. You could put that into a 12 valve truck and it would give you a bunch of fuel down low. It felt really wicked and it was really smoky and we thought it really worked good. I blew up, I was poor and I spent all of my money on parts. I blew up everything. And then I thought, well, I made 900 horsepower on a 215 style plunger. And I'm still making 900 horsepower on a 13, but I blow up way less stuff on the 215 style. So I quit using 13s altogether. During the 13s, this was like circa 2003. Were you born? I was 12. He was 12 <laughs> and I was poor. <laughs> so uh, basically I would put 13 in there and put them in a the stock pump uh, injectors back then, we didn't have big enough. So it made so much line pressure that when you revved up the truck and started standing on the gas pedal, the plunger would stick at whatever rack travel that was. And that's it, it hung there. So if you had it at 16 or 17 or 18 millimeters of rack, the rack stuck right there and it's sketchy because you shut it off and it doesn't really want to shut off. So you're like, oh crap, it's making 5,000 RPM and I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> so, all right, why did it do that? Injector was too small. So then we started making a little bit bigger injector, a little bit bigger injector, and that quit happening. And then it started happening again. And it only happened during like sled pulls or drag race events. And what would happen is you would get one plunger that would hang and it was always the same plunger in the pump all the time. And it's always the one that was the furthest back. So it's usually number six. And that was because as the pump would fill, the fuel would get hotter, hotter, hotter. And I assume that once it got to a point in number six, it would always just hang number six. So then we started dual feeding the injection pumps to try and get cool fuel to hit both ends of the pump. And that seemed to have cleared up that for a while. And I don't remember if it happened anymore after that or not. Anyways, we ended up doing DLC coats, dual feeds, but there again, a 13 mil pump on the street, you can do a lot with a 12 valve. You can, you can outrun the cylinder head, you can outrun the connecting, val connecting rods, valve springs with just a 12 mil pump. So I didn't really fall in love with it. We're making the 12.5s because I already know what a 13 acts like. I didn't like it. Um, I also don't walk, I don't like the flat, top piston or the flat top plunger at all. You, you set it to 20 degrees. It's not enough timing. You set it 22 degrees, it's not enough. You get it 27 degrees and then the harmonics that happen on the street, you, weird stuff starts to fall off. Like the oil dipstick will lose its bolt. The transfer case bolts will fall out. Like you get to a certain point in timing that harmonically the truck just wants to fall apart. So it's not safe, it's not good. And it's I tried it. Second gen, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when second gens were new. Yeah, yeah imagine 20 you, years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it'd be better. <laughs> so with the notch tops, you as you rev them up, they actually make timing. So you can set it at 16 degrees, and if you allow it to go to like 20 millimeters of rack, you're gonna have like eight to 10 degrees more timing yeah. at that kind of rack trouble. Although, I'm tacking out both sides of my face because I don't want you to have 20 millimeters of rack because that means you're asking for like the really big 3000 microsecond injection event. But even at 16, you're starting to gain timing. 17, you're gaining two more degrees timing. It's, it, there's a lot of trial and tests. But basically, uh, my, my opinion on the 13s and 14s, 14s, um, Kevin at Northeast has purchased, we had some 14s made. They worked out pretty good. Kevin liked them. He wants me to change some things on them, but so far from what he's doing with his guys in the sled pull industry, 
they're able to achieve the same mm cubed or cc delivered with one and a half millimeters rack less travel with a 14 than they are with a 13. That equates to horsepower on the engine dyno, which would equate to horsepower on the street. Uh, but for a 14 mil pump on the street, you're gonna need to be uh, like a five by 25 for hole diameter plus, or at least, you know, like a five by 25, if it was EDM correctly, then AFM, probably a five by 18 would be enough. But that's enough fuel to make really close to 2000 horsepower. Uh, Jesse Gillespie, buddy of mine, recently, his engine's currently sitting at uh, Perkins Diesel. It's a 12 valve with a 13 mil pump, and it's like an older Hartz pump, like at least five years old. Um, that's got a set of five by 25s that we extrude honed, and a 3.6 from Hartz from probably three or four years ago. <clears throat> that thing made 1,860 horsepower on a 13 mil pump with a five by 25. You're never going to need 1,860 horsepower on the street. So, plus that's a sled pull truck. Like it's a yeah. nasty, smoky. <clears throat> oh yeah. Overkill. Like uh, you guys, I read a lot of this stuff, and I, I want to help, but it's not very clear to just type my messages out. So, if we can help you, if you want really specific questions answered, um, you can jump on our website and go to the forms, F-O-R-M-S, forms. And uh, under forms, there's like a custom injector order form. You can fill that sucker out and just put a note in there, hey, can you hand this to Lenny so he can help me out? Once I read it, then I can help you figure out like what in your system is actually incorrect. So, Mitch, <clears throat> before doing all the dynos, before learning what you've learned in the past few months, yeah. The 475 with a stock 35, I mean, that's pretty common, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. Would you have suspected something like that to work better or as good as people suspect it's gonna work? Like now that you know that it won't, mm -hmm. like what would your opinion been a year ago compared to right now? Oh uh, yeah, you would have told a year ago, a couple years ago, whatever. I told them just, yeah, it'd be, it'll run fine. And it probably would-ish. It would see that's the thing is like for the average, I think 12 valve guy, yep. it's probably gonna run fine. It's gonna make 500 really hot, yes, really hard on parts, cylinder head cracking, turbo blowing up. It, it'll make 500 horse, yeah. Now, knowing what we know or knowing what I know, I would build a much more efficient turbo setup. I would just get rid of the 35 more than like, especially over a 75. That's a big charger. If you picture like a shop vac with a brand new clean air filter, um, <clears throat> you can you can take the, the 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 suction side and then put an equal hose on the on the outgo side, right? Mm -hmm. So that's air going in and air going out, one hundred percent efficiency. Yeah. And then you go vacuum up some like sheetrock dust because that kills filters, right? And then the suction side goes down, but so does the exhaust side. Now. What you guys are trying to do with this kind of stuff is you're trying to take the four horsepower electric motor and put a 15 horsepower motor on it without cleaning the filter. It's just gonna work its butt off to try and suck more in, but the filter becomes the restriction and that is the exhaust manifold drive pressure. That becomes the restriction, that's the dirty filter. Yeah. If it can't leave, you can't shove it in either. So boost will go up, drive pressure is gonna go way, way, way up, and it's still not gonna move that much air. Without moving air, you're not gonna make any more power. So even though it's got compounds on it, even though it gained 80 pounds, even though you yeah. just spent you know $3,000 on plumbing and flanges, it wasn't the best system. Getting step one would be find a, a better turbo, something that's gonna have a bigger turbine wheel and possibly a gate. Steed speed, I love their manifolds for absolutely one reason their manifolds are killer on on all aspects but you can pick up steed speed is the only aftermarket manifold i've ever dyno tested that's gained one single horsepower and in some applications they'll gain more than 50. the more air you have the the better the manifold result is but if you have a stock turbocharger my advice is buy a steed speed buy a good turbocharger 
that's going to get you 75% of where you want to go. And then a year down the road, when you've got the extra coin, throw a compound at it. Yeah. And then if you want, wherever you want, you can take that steed speed, you can flip it over, you can run it, you know, downward, upward, any way you want, and you can drill into the steed, weld a piece of pipe in there, and since it's not cast, the weld will actually stick without cracking. Yeah. And once you bleed off some of that, you can blow that directly into the exhaust stream down after the turbos. You can blow it in the atmosphere and just have yourself like a, a you know, a two foot long pipe. Or you can even put it into the hot pipe if necessary. If your turbine housing is really big on your atmosphere charger, you can blow it in the hot pipe. I don't hardly ever do that though. Uh, because if you need to do that, you should have just chose the right turbine housing for your atmosphere manifold, uh, for your atmosphere turbo anyways. Um, but yeah, like you, most of these guys are gonna be a fiber. <clears throat> okay, Mitch. <laughs> If you make a dyno hit mm -hmm. for, let's just say it makes 600 horsepower, okay, but it only does it for, say, 200 engine RPM, and let's say that those engine RPM are, let's say we use a 66 mil turbo, uh, like a T3, so it's going to make peak power high in the 2,000 RPM, low in the 3,000 RPM range. Yeah. So let's say it makes 600 horsepower for about 200 engine RPM. Okay. And let's say it does that right at 3K, just for quick, simple math. <clears throat> but you're driving around from idle, which is, you know, 800, 800. Yeah. up to 2,500 most all day long. Right. And even at 2,500, you're still only making 400 horsepower. Mm -hmm. You think that's going to be very fun? No, not at all. It's going to be lethargic. It's going to suck. I had a so, shoot like that once. Yeah. It's and, and we all have. Like, you just shoot for the number, the peak number you want to hear about, you want to talk about it. Yep. But now that I'm older, I just want to know that the overall average is always going up. And depending on your gears in the rear differential, which transmission you have, whether it's an auto or a stick, yeah. um, and the tire size. Like, if you're trying to tow a horse trailer with 355s on a set of 35s, Oof. That's not very pleasant. No. And 12 valves notoriously don't have that great a bottom end anyway. Yeah. So you're going to want a set of 410s in there with an auto tranny so you can actually run down the road at 2000 RPM because if you're running down the road at 1600 RPM with that 600 horsepower peaky yeah. dyno curve, you're well under 300 horsepower where you're always driving it. And it's not very fun. Yeah. Everybody thinks, well, a dyno at 600 horsepower. That doesn't mean that translates to your daily driving. It made 600 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. You drive at 2,000 RPM on your daily. You're cruising. You want it to be really efficient there. Yes. You so move it down. Just because somebody says, like, I make X amount of power. Okay. That's cool. But mm -hmm. is it fun to drive? If it's not fun to drive, then it's probably not something you really want to drive ever. Yeah. Like, your 12 valve, it's 400 horsepower. But it's really fun to drive because... Like you, you go to leave from a stoplight and it is trying its hardest to just light a tire off. It, it moves like that truck. And that was all just putting pilots in the injectors. Like I, I would have not, I've never done a single mod and had it been such an, a, a punch you in the face difference. Yeah. No, that it, it doesn't make any more power, but from 800 RPM up, it's noticeably more powerful. The overall average under the curve is way more fun to drive. It's going to be expensive because now I'm like, well, 400 is cute, but 400 on the highway is still 400. A brand new power stroke comes up next to you at 400 horsepower in your 12 valve, and a brand new power stroke walks away, yep. takes your girlfriend, and leaves you in the dust because it's 420, 430, 440 bone stock. Mm -hmm. So you can't really brag about 400 anymore. Uh, it's just it's not braggable and and that new truck has a 10 speed versus your four oh, the things always in the power exactly that little 10 speed that i just got in that gmc yeah like micro max or whatever the they call that micro diesel that thing doesn't make any power i don't think mean, it's 300 horsepower but it's always in the power curve yeah and it seems really fast so it feels like it's just accelerating super hard and it's yeah. just like banging through gears yeah like it's cool yeah 
when you've got a four speed auto tranny, every time you shift a gear, you lose a thousand RPM. Yep. That's the RPM. That's the part of the curve that you really want to pay attention to. That's where it's at. Um, God, what else? Delivery valves. What have you discovered on delivery valves, Mitch? What have we? We've done, we've done a little bit of playing around. And let's see, what truck? We pulled 191s out. About a year ago. Yeah. And then we put our performance ones in. 024s. Yep, 024s. And that was a... It was a noticeable pickup in power. I don't remember how much power it made. It was a, but the smoke it was very clean. But I don't remember how much more power. It was like it made. thirty or forty. Yeah, it was on, significant. On it, I was trying to teach Mitch how keeping the line pressure as high as possible is really critical. So basically, what we did is we did a test where we just changed injectors, and we got to a point where going up in injector size was yielding us more smoke output and yeah. lower power output. Yep. So we put the small injectors back in it, put delivery valves in it, and then we started doing the same test and we noticed that, I wanna say it was about on like a stockish size injector. It was like a 30 to 40 horse improvement. I'm pretty sure. That's Smoke was way better. better. Yeah. Throttle response was way better. Oh yeah, it was way better. way better, yeah. And now that we had enough line pressure, you could actually feed, instead of it flatlining at stage twos, it flatlined at stage threes. Stage yeah. fours are still trash, they're too big. Mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago, a customer, Johnny Ramirez, had a drag truck, like back halved. Oh, wow. And I sent him a set of stage fours. He put them in, he went down the track, and this is at, uh, at Boise, it was at Firebird. Yep. And he went slower on stage fours, and that was with a 13 mil pump that wasn't really set up correctly at all, I don't think. Uh, matter of fact, it hung, that thing hung a rack open that day, caught fire. Oof. Yeah, so I ended up buying the truck. <laughs> it's a bad day. Um, <laughs> guillotines for life. Guillotines for life. <laughs> yeah, like if you're gonna run 13 mil plungers, get a guillotine. Uh, there's always that that point of diminishing returns, and there's always that point of flirting with disaster. Uh, shoot, what else is there out there that people ask about commonly? Well, so I got this last one. I thought this was a pretty good one, actually. So. Biggest injectors on a stock P-pump. Any pump mods or more for more fuel, new to 12 valves. Once again, what pump are you running? Step one. If you don't, if it's a 160, like a set of stage ones, it's pretty much gonna max out that pump efficiency. Stage fours are just gonna be hotter and smokier and that's gonna be it. Yeah. If you're gonna pump a bunch of nitrous to it, a stage four will make more horsepower, but unless you're gonna drive that thing on nitrous all the time, it's not gonna be worth driving. Yeah, because nitrous, is, you're, it's just oxygen. And That's it's it whenever is. the intake valve opens, you get as much as you give it. Yep. And when the exhaust valve opens, you get out all the horsepower that you can flow. So nitrous, we're not talking nitrous numbers here, like I'm talking street driven numbers, but on the street, if you've got a 215 truck or a 215 pump with just a set of delivery valves and some stage twos, that thing's gonna make 500 horsepower. Oh yeah. Easily. And you know, at 600, the cylinder heads, they don't really love anything more than 600. You just start making so much pressure and so much heat that they don't do well. There's plenty of guys that do it, but there's plenty of guys that don't do it for very long. So yeah. it's not that you can't do some of these things that I'm saying don't do. I'm just saying like, unless your checkbook is endless and you just love to work on crap on the weekend instead of drive it, I've already been there, I've done that. Like I've, <laughs> I've been the guy at 10 o'clock at night drinking Coca-Cola by the two liter bottle and eating Domino's pizza, trying to figure out how to get my truck to, to work in the morning after I planned on driving it home after I broke it on the dyno. It wasn't good times. I would say, okay, if this guy called you and you were on the phone right now, obviously your first question is which pump? Yeah. So, hey, uh, Mitch, what's the biggest injectors I should run on my stock P-pump? Uh, any pump mods for more fuel? I'm new to 12 hours. Size pump you got? Uh, 160, it's a 94, it and it's 94. an auto, so it's a 160 pump. Okay, turbo you got on it? Uh, well, it's stock turbo, but I pinched off the wastegate. Ooh. Pinched off wastegate. We should probably open that back up and put a boost elbow on it. Then. But how come, Mitch? 
I don't know. Getting rid of your excess exhaust pressure is a good thing. Just letting it sit there and overspeed the turbo doesn't make it more efficient. You get to a point with all of these compressor wheels that the compressor blade has a curve to it. And if you spin it fast enough, those curves will literally lay flat temporarily. And even though it says you're making 43 pounds of boost, it made the same power at 35 pounds of boost. But if you measured intake air temperature, exactly. you would see the IAT went way, way, way up. And you're just beating the ever loving hell out of all the air that you're trying to bring into the motor. So yep. don't pinch off your wastegates. Get the little boost elbow. Yep. Try and manage your drive pressure and keep that close to your boost pressure. Okay, so Mitch, you talked me into a boost elbow. That's 20 bucks. Now yep. what? Fuel plate. What fuel plate do you run? Um, I took it out. Ah, okay. So I'm going to recommend that uh, if you're trying to make how much how much power are you after? What sounds fun? I'm new to 12 valves, and I don't really. Well, you know, Mitch, I'm going to make this easy on you and me both. Let's go 400. 400 horsepower. 160 pope. On a 160. Well, I'm going to tell you. Probably going to send you after the stage ones. Stage ones? We're yep. going to do full cuts? No, we're not going to do full cuts. <laughs> not, no. Stop stop buying full cuts, people. We sell them. You shouldn't buy them. Yeah, please don't. Nope. Just run the performance. Run our O24s. They're crispy. They're going to get the best dog response out of those. Our fuel plate? You, get you had a bunch of research done. When you had the fuel plate, years, years, yes. And what number is our fuel plate? Um, it, it's a fuel plate, <laughs> right? We, we, there's we no number. One fuel plate. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's not, a, it's not a zero. It's not a ten. It's just DDP's fuel plate. It has our own custom profile on it. And I'll I'll tell you why I did that. So green screen, boom. There's the profile of our fuel plate. Now, if you picture the bottom of that fuel plate, that's where idle happens. So when you just breathe on the gas pedal, there's a foot that strikes the bottom of that fuel plate after the aneroid housing blows out of the way. And as RPM increases, that foot travels up that fuel plate profile, and you'll see that there's a really ramp in that's super aggressive. And at mid plate, there's actually a pullback. And that's based on the fact that on the street, if you don't start pulling some fuel out of it, you run out of turbocharger. And if you run out of turbocharger without getting rid of some of the fuel, it turns into a hot smoky mess. So that's why we use that fuel plate. With that fuel plate shoved all the way forward, you're gonna get approximately 17 millimeters of rack travel out of it. And honestly, anything more than that, and you're just opening up the injection event so long and so sloppy, you're never gonna be able to clean up the heat or the smoke, it's not a good deal. So our plate might not be the very, very, very best, but I guarantee you that I can make more power with my plate and choose the injector accordingly with O24s. I can always optimize whatever turbocharger you got. And we always start off at fuel plate at middle travel. That's where we always start off. And that is, even on your truck now, making 400 horsepower, that plate's at mid-travel mid of its full stroke where you can slide it around. And that seems to be where it's the happiest for making power and smoke. I've, I've told you since you started using the dyno and installing parts, set everything at 50%, meaning yep. fuel plate, the AFC spring. Yes. The smoke screw, we basically, our AFC spring is longer and it'll start to engage some resistance earlier because most of the time you're gonna use our, all the time you're gonna use our AFC spring, you're using a bigger injector, which is gonna over contribute fuel. If you don't throttle that back using the spring and putting a little bit more pre-tension on that, they get real smoky. Yep. Adding smoke too early in the curve drowns the motor, makes it not very spunky and it's not very fun to drive. So we set everything at 50% and tune from there. Yep. On the dyno, we always, we can add fuel, add timing, add fuel, add timing, add fuel, add timing. Mm -hmm. And then you find where it starts to get hot and cruddy. You pull it back down to where you found your sweet spot. That 
only gives us one throttle position. Yeah. Because we dyno it wide open throttle. Exactly. We throw it together. We set the aneroid housing in the truck at 50%. The star wheel is at 50%, so it's right smack dab in the middle mm -hmm. of the window. And there's about two turns worth of pre-tension on the AFC spring, on the smoke screw on the smoke back. Smoke screw. We put like yep. two turns of yep. tension in that smoke screw. You take it out and you drive it. And at that point, you can get all the, the tip in, which when I say tip in, I mean zero throttle position to like five to 10% is the tip in. I'm gonna fix that first using the smoke screw in the very back of the pump. Yep. We fix that there, right? Yeah, and that'll also contribute to like how, obviously smoke, but then like, if you get that dial in right, you can get the turbo coming in quicker. Yeah, because you're not drowning the engine. Exactly. Now, once we we do our start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, half hour, 45 minutes later on the street, our tip in is as good as it's gonna get. Yeah. Like it's pretty nice. Now we can adjust our star wheel. Yep. Why don't we just do the star wheel instead of the tip in and, well, you can, but if you don't do the tip in first, then every single time for the rest of that truck's life, you drive away from a stop sign, it's either gonna to be too smoky when you pull away, or it's gonna be super lethargic yeah. until it starts to make boost. So dyno it for horsepower. And what do we do on the dyno? We don't even put the Android housing back on. Correct, yeah, we don't, yeah, the Android, we leave it off. We just leave the boost line hooked up to it so there's no leak, set it up on the shelf. And we do everything on the dyno with that wide open, put a towel over the uh, where It's going to slosh some oil out. Yeah, because so it's spinning oil. So We just red rag it, yep. put, the, put the two bolts that hold the, uh, the start-stop solenoid, Yeah. put those in it, and then you can use the key to shut it on and off on the dyno. Mm -hmm. We just shove a red rag on the fuel plate, move the fuel plate up, move the fuel plate back, move the fuel plate up, move the fuel plate back, get it to where it makes the power that we want, and ultimately... Delivery valves are going to be a big contributor on line pressure. You want the line pressure to be as high as possible. A set of O24s, there's some other aftermarket stuff out there that might be just as good. Just make sure it's got a retraction collar still on it. Yeah. If the retraction collar gets cut off, as soon as that delivery valve starts to open, it starts to load up some fuel in there. And until that thing comes to full closure, it's still delivering fuel. That's not great. So on the pump stand, a laser cut is going to make a lot more fuel in the yep. pump stand, but it's not usable fuel that's ever going to make any horsepower. So O2-4s, uh, we leave the fuel plate in it. Yep. You can, I mean, honestly, stock fuel plates will give you extremely good results as well if you choose the right size injector for what you're trying to do. So our fuel plate is a really inexpensive way to pick up a fuel plate's a, a 50 to 75 horsepower guy. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Somebody that wants to leave the factory <clears throat> turbocharger in the truck, take their stock 175 horsepower truck and add 50 to 75, a fuel plate is a very inexpensive way to do it. Yeah. And back when we did the fuel plate, all of these trucks were pretty new, so all the injectors were pretty new. The next thing to be considering is how many miles is on your injectors now? Because if there's 150, 200,000 miles on those injectors, maybe leaving the factory fuel plate in it, putting a set of governor springs in it, yep. and then just doing a set of stage ones would yield you the same 50 to 75 horsepower. Matter of fact, we did a test on that as well. Mm -hmm. We tried to optimize the fuel plate, yeah, and we ended up putting like stage ones in it with factory fuel plate. We made more power on injectors than we did a fuel plate. Oh, yeah. And the smoke yeah. control was way better. That was even before we started using pilot lights. Yeah, that was the original stage ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. A uh, movie. Mitch, should we do this next week? Yeah, why not? I think we should. There's a lot of there's a lot of this on the 12 valve pages. There's a lot of information out there that people want answered. Lynn and I are two people. We can't answer everything. I I know I'm on that page a lot. So I mean, I want to help. It's just some of your guys' questions are like so vague and so broad. And there's 160, 175, 180, and a 215. Yep. We're all P7100 pumps. 
that came in Dodge trucks. And the basics are the basics for all of those trucks, but the injection pump and the camshaft profiles were not the same in any of them. So as these trucks get older, I was just getting ready to get into mileage. Mm. If you've got a truck with 150,000 miles on it, get some really good injectors. Uh, power driven sells really good parts. We sell really good parts. Either one of those two companies is going to be able to get you an injector that's like going to run really good. And once you have a good running base foundation, because truthfully, the injector is the heart of your output. Once you've got a good set of injectors in there, add the other stuff to it and always be thinking about the next step. So if you're going to do compounds, get the turbocharger that's going to work for you and get with somebody that can help you. Um, I'm good with turbos. I can help you with the air side of it. I can give you advice and tell you who to buy it from, things like that. We don't really sell turbochargers, but I'd be happy to make sure that you get something that's going to work right for you. So feel free to call, shoot me a message, whatever. Injection pumps. Um, you guys, I talked to Donovan Harris. <laughs> I talked to Donovan Harris this morning, and he's telling me that up in Canada, you basically can't buy a P7100 pump. Like nobody has one anywhere. Really? Like if you want BD to build one, you mm -hmm. gotta send them your core, they build it, and they send it back. Wow. So, and I knew that day was coming, so we currently, in a box right now, this is after one year of working on this project, we finally have a P7100 complete pump built in the aftermarket. It's gonna show up, the same people have made us camshafts and plungers, things like that. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that it's gonna work good, but I do not trust the calibration of it. So we're getting this thing, <coughs> excuse me, all brand new parts. Yep. I'm gonna have Kevin at Northeast run it, um, but there's, there's two really good pump shops that I've used in the past. Well, there's, there's multiple good pump shops, but um, I've, Kevin's not very far from me, so it's easy for me to get him parts. <coughs> he gets my stuff done pretty quickly. Yeah. There's also, uh, we'll shoot like Mark Massey and, uh, and Dakota uh, at the Pump Doctor. Those guys have done a lot of pumps for me. Um, I believe that's the pump I've got is from those guys on the race trip. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yep. And we discovered that we had a problem with our governor springs. Yeah. But that took a lot of, that was just a mess up on our part. So the point of the story is these trucks are getting old and you can't buy parts. So a common rail, the CP3 pump is fairly inexpensive. You can replace one for $1,200 basically, or you can spend $2,500 on a 12 mil pump. The injectors is where they get you because the injector, you know, is going to be anywhere from uh, 275 bucks per injector, clear up to $4,500 for a set of injectors. So you're still spending big money making sure that the injection of it happens with the common rail. Mechanical, you take the big money for the injectors and turn that into big money for a pump. Exactly. The pump really does a lot. So if you've got a really good pump, then everything else is gonna work, it's gonna fall in line after that. If you've got a garbage pump with a slow cam, you can buy all the cool turbos and all the cool injectors, it's never gonna run that good. So be thinking in the lines of your truck with the age of it, a new pump or putting a quick rate camshaft in it with a good set of plungers, getting all the right tricks and getting it benched and balanced, the labor's not cheap. You're gonna pay for 1.5 days worth of labor on a bench yep. to tear your pump apart, put your <clears throat> pump back together, plus whatever parts you put into it. So P7100 pumps aren't cheap, but they can make your truck really, really, really good. After the pump, the injectors are a lot cheaper for a mechanical truck. I mean, heck, a good set of injectors is six, seven, 800 bucks. Yeah. And that's for a full set. So you're not paying a lot for the injector. I mean, we even got dual feeds now that are only yeah. $1,700. And that used to be something that was $6,000. Yeah. But now we had so many of made, we've got them down to like 1750 bucks for a set yeah. of dual feeds. On the street, a dual feed's not needed. It's overkill. But for those of you competitors out there that want to have something that's buck wild and rowdy, we've got you covered. That's a really good part that's fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And they come as blanks so we can make them whatever angle you want. I don't know, man. It's like... I don't want to bore everybody, so I'd say, I'd say we kind of give up 
come back next week with some more questions, maybe. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, we'll, we'll address like the the six seven P pump stuff. Okay, that's a good idea.